Good morning and welcome to High Point Church Online. We're thrilled that you've decided to spend this time with us. I'm Pastor Carl, the kids pastor, and this is our lead pastor, Pastor Caleb. Can you believe it's been 11 weeks of online services? I can't. What's the best thing that's happened during this time? You know, if you've watched the kids' services, it's obvious my volunteers and I are having a blast putting those together, but it's also been really neat to see the reach that they've had. You know, we have gotten emails and Facebook messages from parents who've said their kids have made decisions for Christ. And as much as I would want them all to be from our church, when they come from churches far away, I just am amazed at what God's doing. God's been using this season. There's always good things that are happening out of difficult times. And I wanna encourage you right now in this moment, if you could, to hit the thumbs up button or the like button, depending on what platform you're watching, and also hit the share button. And a lot of people are like, why do we ask you to do that every week? Well, here's the why behind the what. When you hit that share button, what we're doing is we're multiplying the reach of the gospel. In fact, it, it puts a multiplying factor on what we're doing, and it reaches hundreds, exactly. if not thousands more for every person that hits that button. So thank you so much for doing that advance. Go ahead and do it right now as we get rolling today. Let's just ask God to bless this time together. God, we just thank you for the privilege we have to get together. We thank you for the technology that makes us possible to gather wherever we are. Lord, may we not miss what you have for us this morning. In your son's name we pray, amen. Amen.
Hey, thanks for joining us. Morgan and I would just like to get you up to date on some of the things that are happening here at High Point Church. One of the newest things is every Tuesday at 12, 15 p.m., the pastors are doing what they're calling their midweek pastor podcast. It's just a chance for you to get to know the pastors a little better, the good, the bad, maybe the ugly, keep up with what's new at High Point Church, as well as to get some commentary on the current Power of Three reading. We would also love to congratulate all the students that participated in fine arts. Fine arts is something that students use to develop the gifts that God has given them, and they actually compete with students all across Colorado and Utah. And four of our students won first place in their category, so we want to say we're proud of you, and we love to see what God is doing in your lives. We also want to just take a moment to thank you for your faithful giving to High Point Church. Because of your generosity, we're able to make such an impact in our community through the different outreaches that we're doing. And it's not just us having an impact. You know, we got a letter this week from a community member named Teresa. She and a friend are seasonal workers. And so they were so grateful for the meals that they got. But then she wrote about how she was actually able to go through and get meals for someone that she knew. It's that faithfulness that's making such a difference in our community. So remember, you can give online. You can literally just drop by the church and drop off a check. We'll put in the comments a link to all the different ways that you can support our ministry, but we just wanna say thank you. In fact, let's pray and thank God for what he's doing through our ministry during this season. God, what an honor and what a privilege to be able to represent you to our community. Lord, we always say the church is not a building, but now we're getting to live that. And we're getting to just do things to reach people that otherwise may have never even visited our church. And so Lord, take the gifts that are being given today and multiply them for your glory. In your son's name, amen. Hey, church family, I'm excited to be here today and talking about extreme generosity. And in fact, I have Kayla who is here with me and we're gonna talk about her experience in extreme generosity. Thank you so much for taking a few moments to talk with me today. No worries. I'm excited to talk about this. Before we get into your extreme generosity, I want to uh, just talk a moment about what God has done in your life. When did you start attending uh, High Point? It was about the beginning of 2018, middle-ish beginning and then it was permanent in 2019 is when I started coming. And then you had a huge day in the fall of 2019 when you were water baptized and dedicated your daughter on the same exact day. Can you just tell me about the feelings that you experienced on that day? It was amazing having my family with us and then close family member friends being there to be able to support us through the whole d dedication and baptizing because it's important to me and important to some of my family members. And to be able to just do that in front of everyone and make that next step was a blessing. God's done some amazing things in your life. And uh, I just want to let you know, as a church family, we're so proud of you. And uh, as your pastor, I'm honored to see what has happened and just so thrilled for you as a follower of Christ. And talk to me, what's happened in your life since that day, since you made a decision to follow Christ and you were water baptized? Um, since that day, it's been very a great time because being a single mother and raising her, it actually felt like an uplifting off of my shoulders and that I can do this and I can push through and not be alone and have God there for me. And he's had a lot of miracles that have gone through our life with being a single mother and helpful. Yeah. It's amazing to see not only uh, have you given your life to Christ here, not only are you baptized here, not only have you dedicated your daughter here, you also serve in the early childhood uh, team, and which means that you're serving other people and making an investment in the next generation. I just gotta tell you, I'm so proud of your effort and your generosity with your time. But talk to me, these past few weeks, we have uh, been during uh, dealing with this COVID uh, season and working through what that looks like. And we've been serving meals and helping those who are in need. And you messaged us about giving and talk to me about what was happening in your life and, and why you gave. Um, I gave because there's, when we went and we're doing the Waymaker time and I wasn't able to donate when that happened. And so I just kept praying and praying. Like I want to be able to give one of these days and it's a difficult thing to do when you're living penny to penny as a single mom. So I just kept praying about it and then out of nowhere, I was like, I can just cut out eating out for a week and be able to give a little bit of something to be able to help another family in need during this time and with the donation boxes and stuff. That's so cool. What if I told you that you helped feed over 4,000 people so far? It would make me feel amazing because- And you've, you've done that. 
You've done that and you've served hundreds of families and you're what seems as a, a sacrifice. It's not always easy to do that, but I wanna let you know that we are proud of you and your generosity towards other people. And I, what would you say to somebody who is considering giving in, in this season? I would tell them to just cut something out that's not a necessity and help someone else out. And later on down the road, God's going to be there for you and He yeah. helps you out when you need it to. And so it's our turn to give when we can. Yeah, he, God always takes care of us. And that's one of the beautiful things. And this was your first time giving really tor towards anything in this manner before, yes. right? If I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you know for as a church family that we want you to know that God sees you as a single mom, that you are not alone and that this church family is with you. And as you step out in faith, God honors your faith. And we often say that we wish we could do for everyone what we could do for one person. And today, I wanna let you know that, um, in fact, we have been in contact with your apartment complex and we've paid next month's rent for you. Thank you. We know that there are challenges and issues that everyone walks through and you're not alone. And um, God honors your faithfulness and your trusting him. And so that challenge of, am I gonna be able to step out in faith? Well, God's with you. Not only that, we have a little something for, for you and Tina, um, groceries for the next month, um, a gift card to be able to help pay for your groceries. And as a single mom, we wanna let you know, we wish we could do this for everybody. We know we can't, but we wanna let you know that from your church family, we love you and we're proud of you. And we know a lot of people are going through tough times right now, but, um, but God is with you and you're not alone. Tina, you wanna come over? You can come over here, honey. You wanna come and give mommy a hug? Happy tears. <laughs> and uh, I just wanna let you know, you can always trust God and you're never alone. And we're so proud of you. Thank you so much. High Point family, you made this happen today because of your extreme generosity. And as Kayla stepped out in faith to trust God, I believe that as we all step out, we're making an impact. I wish I could read you every letter and tell you everything that we see and hear as people come by to pick up meals and to experience what's happening or to even hear about what God is doing in their lives through the online services, but because of your generosity, you're making an impact and you made an impact in Kayla's life today. So thank you so much. And I genuinely believe that this is just the beginning for you. Thank you. Awesome.
We are so excited that you chose to spend your Sunday here with us. So as we get ready to hear God's word, go ahead and grab a Bible, grab a pen, grab paper, coffee if you're a coffee drinker. Just get ready to press in and hear God's word with us. Hey everybody, I wanna welcome you to week one of our new series entitled Extreme Faith. And I'm excited to have some of our friends here uh, this morning as we begin this brand new series together as a church family. And uh, we're gonna be walking through the book of James together. So if you have your Bibles, you can open them up to James chapter one. We're gonna start in verse two. We're gonna take several weeks over the next few months to dive into the book of James. We have so much to apply to where we are right now in our lives in this season that we are walking through. So let's go ahead and take a look at James chapter one, verses two through four. And here's what it says. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. He goes on to say this, for when you know when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Over these next few moments, I wanna share a word with you about how we can live with extreme faith through tough times. You know, my boys are often found in the pantry, ruffling through the Oreos, trying to find a snack. They're finding something that they love of some way, shape or form. And I hear them, I know exactly where they are, but they're in the corner hiding, all huddled up, eating like a little chip bunch of chipmunks. And then you ask them the question, did you eat those cookies? And they're like, no. I'm like, dude, come on. You know, they, they, then oftentimes they'll be in hiding. They'll, they'll, they have found something that they know they're not supposed to play with. Micah often says, I got to do my homework. So he gets pens and papers and starts on papers and then ends up on the wall. But they go into hiding when they do that, don't they? Oftentimes, when you find things, you you see uh, them afraid because they know what might happen. They might get in trouble if they're found out what they're doing. And I imagine this, this letter from James written to a bunch of churches all over the place, the group of people that he was speaking to and writing to, reading this letter in quiet. They come together, read this letter from James, the brother of Jesus, because they are fearful for what may happen to them. In fact, this group of people was afraid of what was going to happen to them next because they'd been dispersed because of persecution and hardship because of their faith. And a lot of us in this season, I think some people are genuinely afraid, not of necessarily being sick, but what will happen next? What's gonna happen next in this trial and this hardship? And a lot of people have been looking at this season like, what is it taking from me? What has this season been taking from me? I've paid a price for going and living through COVID-19. Maybe it's a loss of a job or a loved one or difficulty in your business or unemployment. Lots of decisions as business leaders lead their organizations forward. You're You're moving through a difficult season and you're trying to discern what is this taking from me? But can I just challenge you today that this season just doesn't have to take something from you. It can give something to you in return. And there are some things that we need to do, some predetermined decisions that we have to make before we actually start to gain something from this season. And, you know, God's not uh, surprised by the struggles that we are walking through. God's not surprised by the hardships that you face. In fact, neither James was not surprised by the things that people were facing either. I mean, they were sharing a message that was uh, conflicting to what the culture believed around them. And they were dispersed because of these beliefs. But James was speaking to a bunch of Jewish Christians saying, hey, listen, consider this struggle an opportunity. And I believe that's a word for our church during the season is consider this an opportunity. An opportunity for what? For joy. And as we look at this, because of the persecution they were facing, Christians were starting to doubt their faith. They were starting to uh, talk and think, man, is this really something that I believe? And they were struggling. It was was a dire situation. And James was writing them because he was concerned about the spiritual problems that, that would come out of the result of this dispersing of this isolation of these issues. And so he was writing to them and James wanted to encourage and guide their their tired and weary souls. So yet they may believe and trust God with all of their heart. 
And I believe that is so important for you and I, but you have to make some predetermined decisions as we go through this. I love what James says in, in, uh, in chapter, in verse two, he goes on to say, brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way. James didn't say if they come your way. He, say, he didn't say they may come your way. He says when they come your way. Nobody's exempt to trials and challenges in life. Nobody is, is immune to this. You have to make some predetermined decisions. So it's like a UFC fighter. Anybody watch UFC before? And it, nobody's like, I don't believe in that. Come on, you know, don't be, tell the truth in church. You know, like we, UFC fighters don't go into fight without preparing in advance. Uh, you also think about mil the military doesn't go to a war without making a plan. My father-in-law does not camp without a 10 page checklist. Like it just doesn't happen. There are some predetermined decisions that we have to make in this journey. And for you and I to understand that it's not if, but when challenges come, there are three decisions we have to make. The first is that we have to have a soft heart. The first decision that we have to make is to have a soft heart towards God and choose joy. James says this, he says, consider it an opportunity for what? Great joy, for great joy. You know, he's speaking to people who are in hiding, fearing for their very lives. And think about this. Yeah, we face challenges, but we're not fearing for our lives. But yet I believe at the same time, we can get hard hearts to people, to situations, because how it's affecting us and what's going through. Come on, we need to have soft hearts. And James leaves no room for excuses for these people. Hey, he doesn't leave a room for the butt in, in the conversation. He doesn't say, I know you're having difficulty, so you're exempt. He doesn't say, I know that you're having challenges, so it's okay not to have joy. He said, consider it an opportunity to have a soft heart and choose joy. I know some of you are thinking, man, I, I, I want to have joy, but it's hard. But I'm alone. But I'm depressed. But I'm facing hardship. I mean, this is a decision to make not a feeling that we experience. A decision that we make and, and whatever you plant in your life, whatever you plant in your spirit will produce something with what you choose to do. If you produce and you plant bitterness, you will produce bitterness. If you plant anger, you will, you will produce anger. If you plant uh, despair in your spirit, you will become full of despair. But if you plant joy, you will be full of joy. It is a decision that you make and whatever you plant in your life will eventually produce that will be consumed by those around you. Whatever you produce with your life, whatever decision you make about the status of your heart and your mind will be reflected through your action, will be consumed by those around you and will be reproduced by those. You ever wonder why, man, why are they cranky? I don't know why everyone around me has a bad attitude. Why are they so upset? Well, maybe it's because that's what you're producing in your life. Maybe sometimes we think, well, why are they so, they're, they're so critical of everyone. It's a good time for us to ask a question. Am I critical of everyone? Because whatever I plant in my life will be reproduced through those around me. So if you're going to be angry, you might have a bunch of angry people around you. But we have the opportunity to choose to have a soft heart full of joy and not to allow our heart and our spirit to become bitter or angry or frustrated because that's not the God that we serve. God didn't serve out of anger and frustration. He didn't serve out of, out of um, uh, thoughts about what other people, he did it out of grace and mercy and love for his people. And I believe that we can have a soft heart during the season. The second decision that we have to make is this, is that we have to choose to have thick skin in tough times. Thick skin in tough times. We have to choose to be spiritually strong rather than becoming spiritually dull. We, we have to have thick skin in tough times. I, James says it this way. He says, for you know what, that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You don't grow with endurance with thin skin. You ever heard the phrase, have thick skin? Someone needs to get some thick skin. They need to get a little bit of repellent on their skin so things can roll off a little bit better. See, the things around you can either soak into you and transform who you are, or what is inside you can overflow into other people's lives and change and transform the atmosphere that you're in. And I believe that we have to choose to have thick skin in tough times. Every day brings new challenges though, doesn't it? Uh, every, every day brings the ever-changing uh, 
culture is, is, is constantly changing. And this letter that was being passed around to many different house churches and circulated around from, from place to place to the Christians that have been dispersed because of their uh, trials, it, this was like a personal note from James. It was like a, a letter from someone that you looked up to in a major way saying, man, this, this guy took the time to write to us and to encourage us what we are going through. And, and they wouldn't just take it and read it once and set it to the side and say, oh, that was really nice of James. In fact, they probably would have come back on a regular basis, taking this letter, coming together and praying and rereading. And right off the bat, James says, hey, consider it an opportunity for great joy and let your, come on, you got to understand that you, when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. It's like a constant source of encouragement from James for these people. And it's a constant source of encouragement for us. Now, leading during this time, uh, it's a daily decision. It is a daily process, leading. Uh, making decisions on the changing of regulations and the changing of settings and all the things that comes with this season. But it's a daily decision. And I have a constant source of encouragement in the word of God. I have a constant source of encouragement, a love letter from God himself that he took from, from a, a period of time and gave it to us so that we'd have a constant source of knowledge and understanding so that we may not grow weary in, in this journey, in this life that we live, but we may have lifted heads towards heaven to the one who has saved us. And we can have thick skin because we are not ultimately controlled by what happens here and now. The word of God tells us that not only did Jesus come and die, but he rose again and one day he's coming back for us all. And that's what my hope is. And that's why I got thick skin because I can fight another day because I'm not in this alone. So I know that if I can have a soft heart full of joy and thick skin through tough times. And the biggest decision that we have to make is to never quit. Soft heart, thick skin, never quit. James in this moment, writing to people who are fearing for their lives, he said, so let it grow. What is he talking about? Their endurance. He says, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing Nothing. Well, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've never been in a situation where I've needed nothing. Can I challenge that thought process a little bit though? I think we have all we need in Jesus. I think what we confuse are needs and wants. So you have to, to really trust God and grow in your faith. Sometimes you got to let it go like Frozen tells us. Come on, let it go, let it go. Like you got to let it go sometimes. You got to let go of the control. A couple of years ago, I was on a jet ski with my dad and I made the mistake of riding on the back. Anybody ever done that before? Come on, you guys are online, you may know that. You, you, you may know that's tough. I was holding on to my dad for my dear life. He was bucking that thing around like a bull and my head kept hitting the back of his, you know, and, and he threw me off and it would hurt really bad. And if it was painful and it was difficult, but the more that I loosened on the grip and kind of ebbed and flow with the jet ski and kind of went with the motion of where he was going, the pain was a little bit less, although it didn't make it go away. And the same is true with our faith sometimes is that we got to let go of control and push the throttle of faith a little bit more. If you will, yeah, loosening the grip of control over the season doesn't mean that the pain goes away. It just says, I put my trust and I follow God in the direction and the flow of what is happening. And I will never quit despite how hard the bumps get along the way. You know, you think about this, it's not the point to pretend that pain doesn't exist, but I would actually argue that pain exists the greatest when you choose to fight through obstacles. Because when you're fighting through obstacles is when you're going uphill sometimes. And when you walk uphill, your legs start to hurt. They start to get tired and weary. But when you're focused on a goal and you say, you know what, I will never quit. Come on, something powerful happens. And then there's the satisfaction of reaching the top of the mountain. You know, in the garden, Jesus says, God, not my will, but your will be done. You know, the, the point of this in this season is not just to act like it's not existing, but it's to look to something greater. Just like Jesus prayed in the garden, 
It's not my will, but your will be done. He looked past being in control and leaned into God, his father's plans, and then looks past, the, it looks into, what is, into his future. And then he goes on to model what it looks like in Hebrews 12. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured. Jesus himself had to choose joy and to endure something that didn't feel good. He didn't, he didn't enjoy being on the cross, nails going into his hands and his feet, but he looked, it goes on, he says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. He just looked past the pain to the future. What was the future? The reconciliation of being with his father again and the, and the salvation of humanity. See, that's what we have to look forward to is being reconciled with our father in heaven. That is when we are fully complete. That is when we are completely whole. He is the one that we look for and that's why we never give up. That is why we have to have a soft heart to choose joy, thick skin and tough times, and never quit. I know some people are thinking, even right now as you watch online, you're thinking, well, scientifically speaking, the odds are not in my favor. Listen, this is not the Hunger Games. <laughs> it's not. In fact, yeah, death counts, second wave businesses, unemployment, challenges, th this our hope is not in the odds of man. Can I just tell you that? Our hope is not in the odds of man. In fact, our hope is in the eternal promise of Jesus Christ, that we will be reconciled with him once again. And even though we face hardships in this time, he said, hey, let me lift your tired and weary head to heaven because he's the one who saves us. James goes on to tell the people, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Our hope is not in the odds, it's in our God. And we'll never be complete until we get to heaven. So make the most of here and now. Don't quit when it gets tough, keep your head lifted. What are the ingredients of endurance? I think simply is this, is that you have to feed your faith daily. You have to feed your faith daily. It's easy when we can have hundreds, if not a thousand people here on Sunday morning getting, getting excited and having a great encounter with God, but what does it look like when you're all alone watching online? Come on, you gotta feed it, download a Bible if you don't have a Bible. Come on, you can, your Bible can glow. Did you know that? If you need a Bible, we'll send you a Bible. Let us know, put us in a chat. Say, hey, I need a Bible, we'll send you a Bible right now. But you gotta feed your soul daily because when you get a glimpse and understanding of the heart of God, when you understand what he did for you, when you understand what he's capable of, you can say, I can make it another day. I can have endurance because I know who my God is. I know who my father in heaven is. You gotta feed your faith daily. Secondly, is you gotta pray persistently. The, the second thing to enduring through hardship is praying persistently. Even Jesus went in the garden talking to his father saying, God, not my plans, not my will, but your will, God. It's a conversation that, that, that in that moment, God the Father was lifting the spirit of Jesus to be able to endure what he was called to do to complete the promise of saving humanity. But he was praying, said, God, I just submit myself to you. And that's what we have to do every single day. We gotta feed our faith daily. We gotta pray persistently. Lastly, you gotta find a friend. You gotta find a friend. You guys remember the show, uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? We had three lifelines. One of them was phone a friend. Do you remember that, Gina? I used to sit up with my parents and you would get somebody like Dr. Charlie Self on the other line. <laughs> and he would say, Dr. Self, I'm on $750,000. I'm phoning a friend. You better get this right or you're not getting your cut, you know? Yeah. You gotta find a friend. A friend that will call the greatness out of you. A friend that will pull you up off the ground. Come on, I don't know anybody who's done anything great for God who's done it all alone. And if they've done it all alone, that means that they've come to a mountaintop and then fall off all alone. Come on, I don't know about you, but we can't do this alone. You need someone who will show up at your doorstep when you go MIA. Like someone who's gonna pray you through out of your darkness out of the struggles that you face. When you're tired and weary, they'll call the greatness out of you and say, you know what I see in you? I see that God is great and destined you for great things. They'll come make you dinner, even if it doesn't even taste good. <laughs> you need a friend along in this journey. That's why small groups and, and next step groups are so important. Don't isolate yourself in fact, I believe that these house churches, they were in this together. They did this alone. Come on, we got to get together in this journey because there are greater days ahead. 
And I don't know better than anything else than a friend in Jesus. We need physical friends here and now, but we have a spiritual friend in heaven who's waiting for us to come home. Right now, as you walk online or watch online, I wanna just give you an opportunity. So you know what, you may be far from God. You, you may be in a place to where you are struggling alone and, and you, are, you are not in a relationship with Jesus today. God said that he sent his only son, Jesus, to this earth so that we may not pay the penalty for our sins on our, on our own, but yet he paid for them in advance. And God loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins, for your mistakes, for your baggage, and he got put into a grave, but he didn't stay there. In fact, the Bible says three days later, Jesus rose from the grave and, and, and brought life back into his body again, which fulfilled every promise and prophecy to, to save your life. And the Bible says that if we believe that he came, lived and died and rose again, that we, and we confess that with our mouths, that he is Lord, we will be saved. And I wanna extend an opportunity to you right now in this moment as you watch this sermon and, and in this service to say, you know what? I wanna commit my life to Christ. I wanna, ex I wanna extend an opportunity wherever in the world you're watching from right now. If that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer right now from your kitchen, from your living room, in your car, just to make a commitment to say, God, I'm gonna give you my life and I wanna be a friend of Jesus. Would you repeat this prayer after me wherever you are in the world? Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. I ask for your forgiveness. I commit my life to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Come on, can we put our hands together for those right now? Hey, listen. Yeah. We're so proud of you. We're thankful that you made that decision, but you're not alone. In fact, we wanna put some resources in your hand. We wanna help you along in this journey. If you can text the word journey to 74574, we will send you some resources to start. And as we begin services over the next little bit here, we wanna encourage you to come join us on a Sunday morning once we're able to reopen physically, but you are not alone in this. And so if uh, also there's a link that's being dropped in the chat, if you don't do the whole text thing, you can click the link and let us know there as well. But listen, don't give up. Keep a soft heart, thick skin, because you have a friend in Jesus. We love you. We'll see you soon. Hey, church, thanks again for joining us. We loved having you. I want to encourage you, if you've learned something from our message, if you've been encouraged today, share what you've learned. Share the service with individuals who are in your family, people you think need to know and hear the message of Jesus. That is something we are passionate about here at High Point Church. I want you to like, share, subscribe on all the platforms where we're available and stay up to date with everything happening. Thanks for joining us.